Now, my job as an analyst in the New Zealand team is to focus 100% on finding those good companies to invest your money in. Um, and the way that we do that is through very, very in-depth company research. We know these companies that you're invested in inside and out. And we also have a very strong view on value and what the share prices should be. And th that's really allowed us in this recent patch of volatility to make the most of that and find good opportunities to be active because we know when share prices prices are overvalued and when they're undervalued. So in New Zealand and Australia, the New Zealand market's actually been incredibly resilient throughout this period, but there has been some volatility. And while some valuations are still very high, some pockets of value have emerged um, and that's provided some good opportunities for us. But very importantly, the long-term outlook for both the New Zealand and Australia share market is very positive. Because we're relatively young economies, we're very attractive places to live, and so we've got a very strong long-term growth outlook. And that's going to provide good long-term conditions for companies to grow their earnings and deliver strong share price performance. Now, on this chart here, I really wanted to illustrate that important part of our job, which is finding the right companies to invest in and making sure we avoid the wrong companies to invest in as well. Now, last year, the gross NZX50 index delivered an 8.4% gross return. That is, the value of the index increased by 8.4%. But within that, re that volatility that we keep talking about, the dispersion of share price performance, the difference between the best and the worst performers on that index, has got really wide. And on this chart, what I wanted to show you was that through the strong performance of A2 Milk, they delivered nearly 60% of the entire performance of that index, 60% of that increase in value last year, whereas Fletcher Building, through its share price falling, was detrimental by the tune of nearly 30%. So if we'd been heavily invested in Fletcher Building and not invested in A2 Milk, the performance of our funds would have been very, very different. So stock picking is and always will be really at the core of what we do. Now, Wayne, at the start of his presentation, talked about um, how we combine deep company research with economic analysis. And I wanted to give you an example of that, too, just by looking at Australasian housing. Um, now, you can see on this chart the change in uh, Australian house prices in the blue line and the change in New Zealand house prices in the orange line with the change in Australian house prices been very negative in the last year. And David touched on how that has impacted the broader economy. So a key judgment for us in New Zealand is whether New Zealand house prices will follow Australian house prices. And we're very fortunate to have that team of seven in Australia whom we rely on very heavily to provide us very deep insight into that market. Now, in terms of Australia, the housing market has been supported by interest rates that, as David said, were probably going to go lower and relatively healthy population growth. And in that respect, it's very similar to the New Zealand housing market. It has undertaken some macro prudential tightening, and that means those levers that they've pulled to try and slow the housing market, such as doubling stamp duty for foreign buyers and limiting interest-only loans. Again, quite similar to what we've done in New Zealand, just in a slightly different way. One of the key differences is that they've built a lot more houses, and in particular a lot more apartments in this last cycle, even when you adjust for relative population size. So the supply and demand dynamics of their housing market aren't as favourable as they are in New Zealand. But the main difference, we think, has been the Royal Commission, and how that has made banks incredibly nervous about how they're implementing their lending policies, and, and driven them to really pull back lending across a, a, ver a wide variety of different buyer types. And it's that change in lending and that pullback in credit that has really driven the housing market lower in Australia. Now, in New Zealand, as I said before, we've done some of our own macro prudential tightening. You can see on that, uh, up there on that slide, um, investor speed limits, the bright, bright line test extension, foreign buyer ban. Um, but we have built less houses, as I said before. Now, the Royal Commission, the banks, when we talk to them, have absolutely implemented any changes that the Royal Commission has driven in Australia over here in New Zealand as well. We've just simply had more moderate lending practices, so it hasn't had the same impact on the market. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand's put out an initial view that it wants our banks to hold more capital to improve the resilience of our small financial system again. 
Now, that could have the ability to um, slow lending growth and potentially increase mortgage rates, but we think that will have a very slow impact over, the four, over four years um, and not materially change the market. Then, of course, the potential of a capital gains tax, which is a risk for the housing market, although the figures that we look at show us that investors are already net sellers of housing, particularly in Auckland as it is. And I will touch on the tax working group and potential for a capital gains tax again later. So, in summary, we think the Australian housing market's probably got a little bit more to fall before it stabilises. And for New Zealand, while sentiment is weak, and in Auckland in particular, prices have started to fall slightly, we think that the market remains relatively stable, should continue to slow from here, um, but we're not going to see anything dramatic like we've seen in Australia. All of that, when we put it together, is incredibly helpful for us to form our view on what companies we should and should not be investing in at this time. But for those companies that are directly linked to the housing market, for example, Fletcher Building or the retirement village operators, really, by the time we see the quarterly data release of what's happening in the New Zealand housing market, it's too late. We really need to be ahead of that so we can move ahead of everybody else in, in, in changing our positioning and make sure that we are, um, our positioning is right before share prices move. And the way that we do that is simply we just go out and do local market research. And this is an incredibly important part of what we do. We're out there every week talking to companies and industry contact meetings and seeing products and manufacturing facilities. And so this, on this slide, it's just a selection of some of the development sites and real estate agents that we've been out and spoken to in the last couple of months. Now, when it, when it comes to that positioning, that gave us the confidence to reduce our exposure to those retirement village operators um, in sort of the middle of last year. And you can see the Ryman share price in black and the Somerset share price in orange on that chart. Um, and those share prices fell in the last quarter and underperformed the index because a lot of their profits are delivered from development profits and also the resale gains when they sell those units. And property market sentiment is reflected heavily in those share prices. And it also allowed us to have the confidence not to buy Fletcher Building, no matter how cheap it looked as the year went on. Now, I wanted to quickly touch on the tax working group, because I know it's front of mind for many people. Um, and we do see that there is a potential for some kind of capital gains tax to be adopted, because our current tax regime is relatively favourable for investors compared to other Western markets. We do think, however, of the wide spectrum of options the Labour government has in front of them um, across the different recommendations from the tax working group. We're more likely to see something that's, that's purely just focused on the residential sector and second homes rather than the full suite of proposals being adopted. Um, because when you look at the, uh, the effect of implementing capital gains tax on New Zealand shares, for example, not only will it impact all those KiwiSaver members um, across the New Zealand population, which is a much wider proportion than those that own second homes, it also creates a huge administrative burden and a bunch of tax loopholes and a lot of complexity into our tax system. And it's worth noting that those two members who didn't vote for a capital gains tax, the administrative burden was one of the main reasons behind that. Um, so we do expect the proposals will be hosed down, but what's more important is that we've got a very long road to travel down before we see any type of capital gains tax implemented at all. We still haven't yet heard from what the Labour government proposes um, to include in its policy. We should hopefully get to hear that later this month. That then has to be voted on in a general election before it is even implemented. So we're a long, long way away. And in terms of the risk on the New Zealand share market, yes, absolutely, we're monitoring it and we'll keep a very close eye, but it's not the greatest risk at this time.